For my channel, I capture a lot of sound and video footage. My capture computer has received an upgrade and I documented the whole process. I will talk about the components and why I chose them and then there's a time lapse of me putting everything together. At the end, we're going to have a look at the finished product and we're going to turn on the machine and listen to the noise or lack of because this machine is geared to its being extremely quiet because that's very important when you capture video and sound. The motherboard is an Asus H81M Plus, still on socket 1150, mostly because the prices are cheap, but also because all the kinks have been ironed out. The motherboard has four PCR Express slots, quite important because I need a sound card and at least two capture cards, and a third one maybe down the track. What else have we got? We've got two headers for four USB 2 ports, there's a front header for two USB 3 ports, we have two SATA 3 ports and also two SATA 2 ports. On the back we have all the usual interfaces, VGA, DVR, HDMI, PS2 for mouse and keyboard, four USB 2, two USB 3 and also some audio ports. For the processor I chose the Intel Pentium, it's the G3258, the 20 year anniversary processor from Intel. Nothing too fancy, but enough for what I do and down the track I might be upgrading to a second hand i5 or i7. For the memory we have two sticks of 4 gigabytes each, so in total 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. And these are the PCI Express expansion cards I'm using. We've got the Sound Blaster X5 Titanium HD, really good sound card, has good DACs as well as ADCs and can't recommend it highly enough. And these are my video capture cards I'm using, both are from Ava Media. At the top I've got the Game Broadcaster HD, highlight of this card is the VGA input which allows me to capture directly from old retro gaming machines. It does have an HDMI input but I usually prefer to use the Gamer HD Lite which can capture at a higher bandwidth and it also has a pass-through capability. For storage I'm using a Seagate desktop SSHD drive. This is one of those hybrid disks. It's got 2 terabyte of platter storage as well as 8 gigabyte of solid state which helps with improving the boot times. I don't really need high performance in that machine. I need it to turn on fairly quick and have lots of storage capacity. The actual video editing I do in another machine, I just copy the footage over my gigabit home network and then do the editing on another computer. I also got an optical drive, this is just an LG Blu-ray drive, I use that to burn discs and while I'm working on projects I sometimes pop in a Blu-ray and watch a movie on the side. I'm using two front bay devices for the three and a half inch base. One is a memory card reader. I also get another USB ports, but really the memory card reader function is what I need. It uses uh, compact flash and also SD, and I use both of these types. And then we've got a USB 3 front device, goes into the bay, connects to motherboard, and you have two USB 3 ports at the front. Very handy because I've got a couple of USB 3 hard drives. For cooling, I'm using two products from Arctic Cooling. Both are really geared towards low noise and they have some nifty features. Both products have rubber mounts to isolate the vibrations from the fan and that also avoids a little bit of the noise. The CPU cooler is the Alpine 11 Pro Revision 2. It's an old school design, top down blower, but that means that the components around the CPU socket get cooled as well and I really like that. And for the case fan I'm using the F9 Pro PWM. Highlight of this cooler is that it allows you to daisy chain the processor cooler with the case fan and if the motherboard decides that the temperature is too high and speeds up the processor fan so will the case fan and it means you only have to use a single fan header on your motherboard. The power supply I'm using is from XFX, it's got 450 watts, sleeved cables and gets the job done. Totally forgot to mention the case, it's a Gigabyte GZ M2 and now it's time to build the machine. So usually I fiddle with the front header connectors for the uh, power button, the HDD, LED and so on. And then we insert the I.O. shield in the back of the case, insert the motherboard and mount the motherboard with the supplied screws. So now it's time to mount the processor and then the CPU cooler. The CPU 
Cooler has the thermal paste already pre-applied, so that's pretty straightforward. I ran into a little roadblock. The memory modules I used were a little bit too tall, so I switched over to a low prof profile memory. However, I only had two, uh, two gigabyte sticks, uh, but have used the machine in the meantime and haven't had any issues. So uh, with four gigabyte, it's working fine. And I really wanted to use this cooler because it's extremely quiet. And a bit of cable management, nothing too fancy. The priority is that nothing gets stuck into uh, the fan, so it's more that everything is safe and there's good airflow. And I just use uh, standard cable ties from the supermarket. And then I'm also mounting the uh, front USB 3.0 drive bay. And in goes the power supply. It's a very tight fit. Um, the sleeved cables are quite thick, so this power supply has a lot more uh, cables than some of the 350 watt power supplies I usually use in similar machines. But I wanted to have a decent power supply and I had to use a lot of cable ties to just really tie everything together. I'm also mounting the uh, a couple more front devices, the hard drive bay with the removable hard drive and also the optical drive. And this is the last step where I'm inserting the expansion cards. This is the sound card and the two capture cards from Ava Media. A little bit of cable management at the end and then I'm just putting one uh, slot cover for the unused PCI Express slot. But that wraps up the build. And this is the finished machine from the front. We've got the Blu-ray drive. This is where the hard drive goes. I'm using a hard drive bay. Allows me to remove the hard drive for easy backup. It's got a power switch here, a power LED, and also a hard drive activity LED. Then we've got two USB 3 ports, my memory card reader for SD and compact flash cards, the power switch, a reset button, and then I've got two more USB 2 ports at the front, as well as microphone and headphone ports. And this is what the computer looks from the back. Power supply, PS2 ports, HDMI, DVI, VGA, four USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, Ethernet, we've got the onboard sound, this is the x Fire Titanium HD and the two capture cards and here we've got the 90mm fan. And that's what the machine looks from the inside. It's a little bit cluttered. The power supply has lots of leads and they're quite thick and very long. But I did my best job. I used a lot of cable ties and I'm not using a transparent cover. So it's really more about security and safety that all the cables are tucked away from the fan and there's some decent airflow and yep turned out pretty well. I'm quite pleased. Okay, so I'm going to turn the computer on and we're going to listen to how much noise this machine generates. Being quiet was a goal of mine, so I made sure I picked the right components. I've already went into the BIOS and turned on the fan control. So let's just turn it on and see what it sounds like. So yeah, very quiet the machine. The noisiest part is probably the hard drive. Now I could have gone with solid state, but I need a lot of storage capacity. So at the moment, solid state is not really, uh, hasn't got enough value for me. So I went with the hybrid solid state and platter hard drive. Please subscribe to my channel. Share this video with your friends via Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus or Reddit. Hit that like button and if you've got any comments or questions, just leave them down below. I'm always eager to hear from you.